This is an overview of the Eagle Ballistics app, looking at the heads-up display. I'm filming the screen at the same time. You can put in your wind direction. You can click on wind speed and set the wind speed. This will also connect to a wind meter. So if you click on wind and you can see in the upper left-hand corner where it says HUD, there's two TV screens if you flip it. If you hit start, it will start a timer and the phone just vibrated. And if I was holding a wind meter, it would average out the wind and hit stop. So however long you have that going, it would average, average out the wind, click it back. Or you can physically type in the wind speed, but this does allow you to use a wind meter. If I'm in wind meter mode, it's strictly taking the wind speed from the wind meter. As you can see, if you're using a Kestrel like the 2700 or 5700, it will actually grab the temperature and station pressure and everything as well. So let's go back to manual. All right, looking at the HUD or heads up display, normal is for normal shooting. If you're shooting across a valley, you click on valley, it highlights orange to remind you you left it on. And this will calculate the vortex in the valley as good as it can because nothing's perfect. So let's say we're using a wind meter and I got a nine mile an hour wind here. So let me just make this a nine mile an hour wind coming from nine o'clock. It will now add to that wind to help you hit the target because it's gonna add a small percentage to it. Uh, Canyon for the same thing, it will add. You can see my wind changing up in the upper left. It's got your dial ups, 21 minutes. And then it's got your wind push at seven and three quarter. If I click on valley, you can see it decreased it. If I go to normal, it's a five minute wind hold. Moving on up, it's got range. This is where you type in the range, let's say uh, 520 yards. Or if you have a range finder, which I'll show you in a minute, it will connect to it and take it from there. So let's take this range finder. And basically most range finders that have Bluetooth connect ability will work. Click on devices, fire it to wake it up. It's interpolating it, connect it. And now as I range a target, Thousand yards, you can see we're at a thousand and two, and then we're at 300, now we're at 500, now we're at 600, now we're at 700. You can see how fast this is. Uh, 658, there you go, 706, 903, that elk is 993 yards. So the range finder is now feeding it compass direction, station pressure, temperature, the SIG is, and the angle inclination or angle modified range and the range. Now, if we don't have a range finder, I'm gonna set that down. You can click on inclination. By the way, anything that's dark gray is a selectable button. If I click on it, I can use my phone, which defaults at 10 power, aim it at the target, hit set. It just grabbed the compass direction and the azimuth. Or if you open that again and go to the little, again, TV screens, you can manually type it in, all right? So that's the basic HUD, and this allows you to basically put anything you want in there as far as range goes and all that good information. Uh, up top, it's giving you retain velocity, retain energy. It's giving you your max ordinate, how high the bullet is. You can do this in feet, meters, or mils. And it also gives you the flight time of 1.49 seconds. Uh, if you click in the gear in the upper left corner, this is where you can shoot off of a tripod. Go back to the HUD, that little orange bar says, hey, it's active to remind you left and on. It decreases a couple uh, digits off your minute of angle because of muzzle flip when shooting off of a tripod. Let's get rid of that. If you're a PRS shooter or military, go to multi-mode and it gives you the multiple target lanes. This is always live and active. If I have a wind meter hooked up to my phone, it will put the wind straight across every target, slide it left and right to get different lanes. Um, you can see it's got your standard wind hold, your high and low. You tell it, let's say that I want a wind variant of 1.3 mile per hour. It'll give you a high wind hold, low wind hold, and a standard. It's got what's called relative wind. If that's turned on orange, you select the target. You want it to remember where the wind's coming from when you got that target. Since the range finder is hooked up, you'll notice it says 994 yards. If I range that target at 600 yards, it drops it in, select the next target, range it, it drops it in. You can kind of see where this is going. If I want to grab hand type in the range, you click on it, 620 yards, and go to inclination and azimuth, you can grab it. So you can literally go to a stage, get your book, get your 
incl inclination and azimuth for every target, type it in, you're done, you're ready to go. All right, let me get off of that and turn this off. I got more detail on this in the future, but I'm just showing you small pieces. All right, moving over to the, the grocery card, I like to call it. This is where you can purchase different subscriptions. Uh, it has a little link to come to my training here at Barber Creek. Go to the settings. The settings is where you program all your guns. This will hold as many guns, up to 30 as you want. So let's work on an unnamed gun. So go to the this, this, uh, settings, and if you start from the bottom, it's got email information, activation is for my students. Uh, other, it's gonna allow you to use metric or imperial. You can, this will literally grab the station pressure with the phone, with an iPhone. It's gonna use a local airport or weather station for your temperature and humidity. Um, again, you, you can decide that. If, if you're using a rangefinder that provides that, it will override it. This is the lowest priority using the weather station. If you're using a Kestrel, it will become a higher priority and it'll grab the station, temper and temp station pressure and temperature from it. Moving on down, it literally is grabbing the latitude from the phone, so that's all taken care of. It'll do fractions or decimals. Look at my HUD, I got 9.75. If I prefer fractions, you can see it's nine and three quarter. You just decide how you want it set up. It can show station pressure on the HUD or not. Moving targets is for the shooting at moving targets. If I go to the HUD now, you can see it says moving targets. I'll click on it and I can type in the speed or I can hit the little circle, look through my crosshairs, hit start, count how many minutes or mills, hit stop. It's a 1.12 mile an hour mover, hit set, and it drops it in there automatically. Okay, going back to the HUD, I know I'm going fast. Relative wind, it will remember where the wind's coming from on the multi-target. Aerodynamic jump, it's gonna do automatically, but you can actually see it. Your max ordnance, I told you, is an MOA feet or mills. Target, or multi or single. Diagnostic is where you can get raw information about what's going on with your shot. It's giving you maximum hunting distances for lead core and copper jacket projectiles. It tells you where you're transonic at, speed of sound. Impact, it's giving you your Mach number, it's giving you time of flight, it's giving you retained velocity, energy, and so on. Uh, target, all your information, inclination, azimuth, moving up, wind is kind of common sense. Environmentals, again, it's grabbing absolute pressure from the cell phone. You can actually make it grab from here if you want, but I prefer it from the cell phone. Temperature and humidity, again, can come from one of these weather stations or an outside weather station. What you zeroed your gun at, 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, scope angle, make sure it's locked in so it locks in the angle of line of sight to where the bullet intersects. That tool right there that looks like a ruler is designed for you to say, okay, I'm zeroed at 100 yards, but I'm not a perfect zero. You measure from what you're aiming at to where your bullet impact is, and you hit set zero height, and it will automatically adjust your zero height, okay? Moving on down, this is where you true your ballistic coefficients. By the way, it's giving you your RPMs, your spin rate of your bullet, and it's telling you what your gyroscopic stability is, which this is terrible for this projectile. All right, and then we're gonna move to truing velocities. Well, let's clean this up. Let's go to the library uh, bullet, let's select it. Let's say we're gonna shoot Hornady ammunition. Click on Hornady. We're gonna shoot a 308 caliber, and we're gonna shoot the uh, 208 grain. Hit select, it automatically drops in the BC. Let's say our velocity from a chronograph is 2960, and now we've got all information set. By the way, you would unlock that and lock that again once you put all your real information in, okay? So now you can see I got a gyroscopic stability of 1.630 and I'm at 213,000 RPMs. If I needed to true my ballistic coefficients, click on the button to the left. Let's say that I shot 1,000 yards, not 4,000, 1,000 yards, and I said it really took me 26 minutes. It says either your velocity is really 28, 24, which I never true velocities if I can true a ballistic coefficient. I will select true BC. It says that my BC is not 0.338, it's 0.2742. Hit select and boom, it's done. So I just trued my ballistic coefficient. Moving on up is where you can name the gun. We'll just call it no name. And then you can put in the barrel twist. It's an eight twist. And scope correction factor and sight height. So sight height, I've showed you this before. 
click on the tool, scope height, my, I'm sorry. If I measure from center of the scope to where I believe center of the barrel is and I hit set, boom, it dropped it in automatically. You can use calibers and do it as well. Uh, scope correction factor, if I did a tall target test, and let's say I did it at 100 yards, my fingers are too fast, and it's, I dialed 30 minutes, and I shot my groups, and it really moved the impact 31.54 inches. It says I have a correction factor, 0.996, hit select, it automatically did your sight scale vertical. So now this gun is 100% set up and ready to go. All I got to do is go to my heads-up display. And if I'm shooting 1,000 yards, uh, let me select it over, 1,000 yards, hit set. It's telling me to dial 25.99 minutes. It's got a wind push of left. Let's make it a 3 o'clock wind at 3 mile per hour. And, oh, that was a mover speed. Helps if I push the right button. 3 o'clock wind at... 3 mile an hour. It's telling me to push right 1.02 minutes. Now again, for you guys that shoot mills, this does mill, of course, as well. Uh, let me turn off that mover. In the upper left, you can turn a lot of stuff off quick or turn it on so it doesn't show. And you can see it's a lot cleaner without that in there. All right, again, this app does so much more than any other app, and I haven't even touched on everything. The last thing I'm going to talk about is let's click on the range, and let's hit the little flipping screens. This is where you can size an animal. You can say that, okay, I ranged that Gims buck out there at 822 yards. I look through my scope and his horns are, let's say that his horns are 3.7 minutes tall. Hit set, that horn is 31.85 inches, right? Ranging is for ranging an animal with your reticle, kind of common sense. Again, if the range finder is connected to your phone, you can just range it. You don't have to type anything in, 824 yards. All right, so this is the Eagle Ballistics app. It is available for everybody that can see this. Uh, as far as when I say see this, see this on the App Store. There's other things it does. I'm not going to get too much into detail. Um, I know a lot of guys want to come to my school and learn how to rain rain and mirage the way I teach it. That portion is completely different. It has nothing to do with this app that's for sale. You guys will get a completely different unlock code to get something else. All right. Clicking on the range card, you can set it for however many yards you want it. Let's say we're doing 100 yard increments. Detail and wind, wind gives you wind holds left and right. Detail breaks down everything that's going on. For instance, let me make this even better. Let's go to our heads up display and let's say that we're shooting like I did yesterday at 1,642 yards. So if I hit set, go to the range card, and then I click on detail, you can see it's telling me how much spin drift I got, how much Coriolis, wind deflection, all the information there. I got 36 inches of spin drift. I got seven inches of Coriolis. Because of the cardinal direction I'm shooting, I've got 13.31 inches of vertical Yotovis. I got 2.35 of aerodynamic jump and so on. So it's just really detailed information. Again, back to the gear. I, I don't have one. I do. Give me one second. Stand by. I'm going to cut this real quick and then come back in. Okay, I'm back. I had to grab a Kestrel. So we're going to turn this Kestrel on. And you'll notice when I'm in the devices, it just popped up. All right. Now, this one's already been connected. Let me disconnect it. You can see it's integrating. It's saying, okay, where is it? Where is it? So now that I have the Kestrel turned on, uh, let me close the app and pretend that it's brand new. Go to device. Kestrel's turn on. And I hit connect. So now, as you can see, it's grabbing the temperature from the Kestrel. Uh, let's go to meter, watch the wind. So the wind is right now. If I'm in the multi mode, again for you PRS guys, watch the wind. It's changing the wind across the board. Let me go back to single mode. I just want to show you again. If I'm in the meter mode and I click on the wind speed itself and I hit the little TV screens, watch it average, start. I hit stop. I've got an average wind speed of 0.7.67 mile an hour. I go back to my HUD and again, if I had it locked the wind, it would have held it, right? This is where you can lock the wind, by the way, and it turns orange to let you know it's locked. So let's go back to manual. 
Again, if you're not using a wind meter, nothing's gonna happen until you turn on the wind meter mode. Oops, fat fingers. And I'm gonna hit lock, it locks the wind, and then go to manual, it's still there. All right, again, it will connect to the 2700, the uh, 5700 Elite, all that. I'm gonna turn this off. And now the app itself is gonna go back in about, it takes about 30 minutes, it's going to the nearest weather station. The reason I have it on 30, because if you're running one of these, you don't want them to keep going back and forth, all right? So if you have any questions, this is the Eagle Ballistics app. It does, again, more than any other ballistic solver on the market as far as everything it offers. It connects to most Bluetooth devices. If it doesn't connect to a Bluetooth device, then let us know, and if we can get one, we can probably make it work. Um, other than that, this is ready to be put on a rangefinder. So we've got a couple rangefinder companies interested. Uh, so for you guys that have rangefinder companies, this can be put right on your rangefinder itself, you know, similar to what SIG does with Applied Ballistics. Um, so again, Eagle Ballistics, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.